Right, morning year 11, we're here to do things that we're not very good at, being the overview, and we're going to look at the causes of illness and disease over time. Now, if we look at this here, we've got to start with the medieval period. Right, so we start with the idea that they didn't really understand a lot about the causes of illness and disease. That's a difficult one to write because when you talk about causes of illness and disease, it's not like the other themes where you talk about change and big change and little change. You're talking about how understanding change and you're talking about what diseases people thought or what people thought caused illness and disease. So it's a bit more tricky than the other ones. Now what I thought is important to go in there is you've got the idea of the four humours. And most people believe that illness was caused by an imbalance of the four humours. Okay, so that's one thing I thought was important to get in there. The idea of superstition. Right, illness and disease are caused by superstition. Then I put in there the ones that they like to hear about is poverty, famine, warfare. I put the idea about William the Conqueror ploughing salt into the soil in 1069, it's a nice little example, uh, causing famine. And then the idea of uh, medieval warfare causing huge amounts of deaths or illness and disease. The 22,000 killed at the Battle of Townsend. A lot of people mention accidental deaths. Not overly keen on that, it's something that a lot of people remember where you know, five or six people fell down a well. I don't know if I'd necessarily use that, but again, I suppose you could go down the line of saying illness and disease and people died from general uh, not understanding or sort of making mistakes in the medieval period. Now, the one that we can't leave out, the only real big one is when we talk about causes of illness and disease, we've got to include big case studies. There's not many. But for the medieval period, you've got basically the Black Death is our biggest one. So make sure you mention that one. Make sure when you're going into it, you're going into the idea that what people thought caused the Black Death. What actually caused the Black Death, we go down the line saying trade, rats, bubonic plague. Right? You can mention all those things. But it's also important to say about what people actually thought caused it. So things like Jews poisoning the wells, movement planets, lack of understanding, poor sanitation. All those things can go into you discussing what, what caused disease and what people thought caused disease. Okay, so that's the bit where this one is a little bit tricky. It's not only you talking about the causes, the actual cause with the Black Death, but you talk about people's lack of understanding as well. So make sure you get those two ideas across, okay? But those are your main ideas, and I think that will make quite a sound paragraph on the medieval period. Okay, so that's paragraph one. Right, the next part, our favourite bit, the early modern era. Now, it's always the bit that when I mark this in the summer, just gets left out. Nobody ever puts it in. People talk about medieval all day long. They usually write four or five mini paragraphs in the medieval and just completely forget the early modern. Now, it's quite easy with this one. This is where if theme one comes up, cause of illness and disease, you're laughing because there's really only one case study. Great plague. That is really the only thing that you can really mention. There's a few other things that I've added in here, but if you get the Great Plague, then that is really a job well done. So, what I've put in there is that, and again, if you want to get this idea across about change, lack of change, you can mention the fact that there's continuity in terms of people still don't really understand what's causing most illnesses and diseases. So, get the idea that it's still the four humours, superstition, soothsayers, people are still dealing with hand-me-down recipes, it not a lot really changes in some respects. I'll put, again, mention about the Great Plague. If you want to back that up with some statistics, I've got the idea about 100,000 people being wiped out in London. You could throw in there as well that most villages lost about 25% of people. Anything along those lines, really, just to give off the idea about the impact of the Black Death. Sorry, the Great Plague. Don't say Black Death, that'd be a bad idea. Now, if you go down, I'll put in there, one of the things that did change is we talked about Eam quite a lot. Now, Eames shows one of the differences between the Black Death and the actual Great Plague is quarantine. So, they started to use quarantine, which is stopping people from leaving. And it's worth mentioning that, because it shows that people are understanding a bit more what's causing illness and disease to spread. So, you can mention quarantine, uh, the burning of anything that was to do with the plague, using vinegar for sterilisation. These are new methods of dealing with the causes of illness and disease. Okay, So, you could mention those. I've left Alexander Gordon in there. Because uh, I thought, well, that's a, a way of preventing illness and disease. So it's understanding, again, of the causes, isn't it? You're using chlorinated water. So I don't know if they would credit that in an exam. 
But I thought, well, what's wrong with putting it in there? Because the worst they can do is not credit it. They're not going to take marks off for it. Now, I've also put in as well, when you talk about the causes of illness and disease, you can put these odd ideas in. So people had odd ideas that didn't work, like eating rhubarb, tobacco being the wonder drug. I thought all those things could be made relevant. As long as you keep on that idea there about it's being about the causes of illness and disease. Remember, there's a lot of things you can bring in. What I'm talking about is what I think is absolutely got to be in there, but there's a hell of a lot of things you can bring in from outside as well. Okay? Right, now technically you only need three periods to get through and make it a good answer. I've split this down into four, so I've made one extra paragraph because I've split the industrial and the modern era. You don't have to do that, you can just call it the modern era and include it all in there, it's up to you. But I prefer to break it down because I think there is quite a lot, and it's the same for everything. There's a lot more as we approach the end of it than there is at the beginning, so I like to break it down into two paragraphs rather than have just one big long one. I also think you get across the idea a bit better of chron uh, chronology and changes more than you do if you just say modern and then write everything in there. So what people tend to do if they do that is jumble it all up. So they'll have Christian Barnard and then they'll go back to looking at cholera or something like that. So I thought this way is a better way of doing it. Now, um, I'll put there it's difficult to word this, but the main causes of illness and disease are specific illnesses. They're different insofar as they're caused by different things. Right, really, we're talking about industrial revolution. The big issues come from overcrowding, poor sanitation, dirty water. Okay, that's where the illnesses and disease are coming from. So it's a little bit different to the previous two periods insofar as we're talking about now. Cholera, typhoid... I don't know if I put another one in there. Yeah, we talk about work-related illnesses as well. So, I put there about the cholera outbreak. Now, do you mean to mention John Snow? We can do. There's nothing wrong with it. If you want to talk about how he solves the, the problem and develops understanding of the causes of illness and disease, you can do. That's fine. So you all know how he did it. He took the handle off a, a water pump in Broad Street. And he did the, the, the survey where he plotted out where it was going. Also worked out that it was being caused by throwing dirty water, uh, sorry, all the rubbish into the River Thames. So you can mention all that. That's relevant. You can put that in there. I'll put typhoid as an example that they put in the book. Uh, big outbreaks. An epidemic that killed 132 people, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's, it's a fair few. I'll put in there as well, you've got to get this idea across, really important with the industrial areas, it's poor sanitation, it's overcrowded, it's life expectancy, all those things are causing illness and disease. So you just get that general drift across. And actually, if you think about it, if you talk about the amount of disease there is, it's probably worse in the industrial era than it was in the early modern because there's more people and there's more people affected. Okay, so you can get that idea across as well. Now I've also put one of the big things is factory working conditions. I put about fossy jaw, uh, which is workers working with matches and the fumes that were coming off that, they're actually giving people cancer of the jaw. You've also got testicular cancer for chimney sweeps, just a couple of examples of what industrial living conditions did to people's health, okay, or what caused illness and disease. So you can get that idea across there, all right? So just try to, to really signpost those different diseases, okay? Right, okay. Now, I'd like I said, I split this, this one down into modern. Now the modern one is probably the one where we've got the, the biggest examples. Now the biggest change is, previously, yeah, we've had pandemics, but there's far more in the modern era than there were in previous decades and generations. Black Death was a pandemic, okay, so you could mention that earlier on, but that's, a, for me, I think one of the big points to get across is what we're looking at is in the 20th century, the causes of illness and disease are still, they're still massive, aren't they? We still get illness and disease in the 20th century. We've still got things that can break out and go worldwide and cause devastation and give us a bit of a reality check as to our understanding as well. Now, the, Two big examples you need to mention. You've got Spanish flu. Now, Spanish flu is interesting because I've not put it on the board, but it, the types of people it's affecting were young. It was affecting people between 18 and 40, not older people. So unlike current outbreaks that we're talking about, it's not affecting the elderly, it's not affecting the very young, it's affecting the middle. 
which is why it was so deadly. Because we're looking at an estimated 20 to 40 million worldwide, so it's infected 20% of the world's population. It killed more people than World War One. So it's really important to mention the Spanish flu. If you want to get into, I know some of you are better than others at mentioning the why, like the scientific reason behind why it was affecting certain people, you can do. All right, but you just need to get across the idea that it's a big epidemic, it's killing huge amounts of people, and it terrified people because people did not know where it was coming from. And it's called the Spanish flu because the British government wanted to dissociate themselves from the, the spread and the start of it. So they, they got the whole idea across that it was coming from Spain and called it the Spanish lady. Okay? Now, the other example that we use, the most modern one, is AIDS. Now, for all the progress that's been made in medicine, AIDS was no better in terms of understanding than probably the Black Death or something like that if you track right the way back. Because for decades it wasn't understood. There was stigma around AIDS, they didn't understand the causes of it, didn't understand the spread of it, were powerless to prevent it. So you got the same fear that you'd had in any other decade. So that's something that if you want a really, really good answer, you've got to get across that idea that although we've come a long way in our understanding, a lot of things don't change. Okay, and you've got the figures here I put in there for AIDS. You've got the idea of 40 million are living with the disease, 40 million died up to 2014, and the idea that in the UK, 100,000 people um, are currently living with AIDS. So it's that idea, get that idea across about the fact that we've got another disease, another, well, pandemic, isn't it, AIDS, and we don't really understand how to stop from spreading, although that has developed. So you get across the idea that it's developed since the start, but we're talking about 40 years really, aren't we? Since AIDS first arrived, we're talking about 40 years and very, very, very slow progress if you think about it. Okay, so get that idea across. 